are you ready to tessellate? You might not be because you might not be sure what tessellation means, but tessellation basically means turn the shape you've got into a wallpaper pattern that covers your grid. Now, remember one key thing with wallpaper. It's got to be the same everywhere. You can't have one pattern in one place, different patterns in different places. Or you could, but it wouldn't quite be a wallpaper pattern. So let's tessellate this shape. We're going to turn it into wallpaper. Let's use orange. Now if we tessellate without any strategy, we might run into problems. For example, I said tessellation was drawing the same shape again and again, like wallpaper. So let's do that. Let's do the same shape. There we go, we've done the same shape. So really we're kind of tessellating, but there's a problem with what we're doing and we're going to find out soon, I think. So I've drawn it a few times, but you notice I've kind of just drawn it anywhere I wanted. I didn't really think about where I'm drawing it. So I've done it a few more times. And the question might say, if we're doing it in an exam, draw at least eight shapes. So I'm, I'm going along, I'm happy, I'm having fun, tessellating. But I'm beginning to get a bit worried. Because as I draw the shapes, I notice that I'm leaving some gaps some in places. Now, with wallpaper, you can't have gaps like that. You couldn't have a nice, lovely pattern for most of the wall. Then in one corner, all the shapes get jumbled up and don't look very nice. So here we have a gap and we cannot fill it with a kite. There's no way to fill that gap with a kite. Even if we did it like that, that's a different kind of shape. It's a, a different sized kite. So we couldn't do that. The kites have to be exactly the same shape when you tessellate. So let's do it again, but this time with a bit of a strategy. My strategy would be to do all the kites going vertically, as in going up or down. And let's see if that works. Okay, here's my first kite going down. And all my kites that I now draw will be either going up or down. They won't be going sideways like in the previous example. And hopefully, my pattern will turn into a lovely wallpaper. In fact, it's so good, I might want to go out and buy this pattern and put it on my walls. My wallpaper is pretty rubbish, I'll be honest. It's not even wallpaper, really, it's just a wall. I kind of need wallpaper, actually. Anyway. Um, so here we go, it tessellates, and it tessellates perfectly, and there's no gaps, and it's a success, and I could carry on forever, but that'd be very boring, so I'll stop. You notice that there's no gaps anyway. Okay, let's do one more shape. We're going to practice our tessellating skills, and we're going to treat it like a real-life exam question. Here's how they would phrase it. They'd give you another shape, like so, here's our next shape and they would say tessellate the shape on the grid you must draw at least six shapes okay let's see how that goes what's our plan well I think do it vertically again let's keep it simple so we've got a plan this time, we're not going to draw it randomly like going sideways or something. For example, we could do a shape going sideways, but let us I think we've learned our lesson, we're not going to do that. We're going to do them all in the same direction. And it's a bit easier because I've got my um, drawing tool. And we're tessellating, we're having fun, we're tessellating. It's going well, I think I've got the marks for this one, I think it's going really well. And I'm done. Do you notice that? It said you must draw at least six shapes, and there are six shapes. But wait, it said you must draw at least six shapes. I don't know if you noticed, but I only drew five shapes. There was one given to me. Uh oh. That's right, we need to draw six shapes, so there'll be seven in total. So I draw one more like so. That's the one mistake I see most often with tessellation, is that they draw, uh, a student will draw um, 
enough shapes so that there's six in total rather than drawing six themselves. So watch out for that mistake. Final thing with tessellation is the word tessellation. Why do they call it tessellation? And I looked into that because I didn't know actually. And apparently it comes from Latin tessella. And I'm curious about why the word comes from Latin. And I've got a theory. I was just in Rome recently and I saw lots of lovely mosaics on the patterns um, of the walls and the ceilings of the Roman forums. And I think that we get the word from Latin because of that heritage of mosaics that the Romans gave us. Just a theory, I'm probably wrong, but that's what I like to think. So when you tessellate, drawing your six shapes or your eight shapes on your grid without any gaps, you're carrying on a tradition that goes all the way back to Roman times.